Yeah, Greg, uh, I really appreciate you reaching out, man. Uh, how's everything been? What's going on? You told me uh, you gave me some updates on China and Taiwan. Oh, yeah, the date. Well, uh, you want to go political? Um, <laughs> well, if you're running for Senate, Senate, you know, it's just a, here, before we go political, you got to realize that, you know what mid-level management is, right? That's exactly what the president is. That's that's the highest you're going to go. Um, it, it's kind of like when you go shopping for stuff, you're getting all the mid-level stuff, right? That's the best you're going to get. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. But here, when you read about all the ancient kings and all that, too, you know, in ancient history, they were mid-level management also. I know things like that. Say again. Nebuchadnezzar, things like that. Yeah, they were all mid-level management. Actually, you brought up Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and you read in Scripture, he was uh, basically let his hair grow, let his nail, nails grow, kind of like Sam Hughes or whatever. Yeah, you see all uh, and Babylonian things with the curly hair, and they're all with the... Well, no, to show that he was mid-level management, if you read in the book of uh, Daniel and other places, he uh, went nuts. He uh, lived, he went out in the uh, forest and ate what the animal ate. He let his hair grow. He didn't bathe. His nails grew out. He acted like a wild animal for about seven years living under a tree. Wow. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, you could read that. I'm writing this down. Yeah, tell, yeah it's in it's in the right smack in the middle of what's called the book of Daniel, Daniel. And um, what's interesting about that is after he went through that period of seven years, I, what would you call that, right? I mean, um, pretty much insane, right? He declared that the Elohim were running the planet. The Elohim, by the way, when you look at that um, King James Bible, they call them God, and they're not God. And the top, the head honcho in there is Yahweh, and they call him Lord, which is appropriate because the head honcho is the Lord, right? That's so me, yeah, he has it, the long ship. They live forever, and all the other gods are jealous. I'm just trying to recall what you teach me. Yeah. Also, he has. Well, in the machine, the, the the water that does like the clouds and it comes, it flows out. The Garden of Eden was never here. Anyway, I don't mean yep, to keep yep. interrupting. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've seen Independence Day, right? The big spaceships. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's what's going on. Now, the Elohim, um, the word God, by the way, is Teutonic, uh, old German, old English. It means the sun or it means those that are up in heaven, you know, like Anunnaki or whatever. Uh, well, since we got onto the politics, um, there is uh, geo, there's geopolitical politics, which I think we just disqualified as any of having any significance. And we jumped right to cosmic uh, po politics. Now, one thing that when you look at all the religions of the world, all of them, bar none, they are giving you cosmic politics, inner, not the inner cosmic politics, but what you think you should know uh, after you've been declared an idiot. Um, that, that's how they view the people, by the way. So if you if you look at uh, all of it from that perspective, which is the correct and true perspective, um, they're mostly lies. But in order for a lie to be believable, you have to have some truth. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you find what the some truths are in the religions, they all lead back to the, the volumes of texts that they subscribe to. You know, the, the, in the Hindu tradition, they have the Rig Vedas, the Puranas, the biblical is the Christian and the Judean. The, uh, the biblical is also the Muslim, by the way, because, you know, in the Quran, Syria 26 and Syria 28 basically says that uh, there's no God's law is not in the Quran. You have to go get it from Moses. Well, where do you get that? You have to go to the Old Testament. So the actual Quran directs the reader to go to the biblical text. How many Muslims do you think do that? Uh, big fat zero, right. Okay, so, and also the biblical law, by the way, is commanded all throughout the Bible. It's never done away with. <coughs> so all of these religions and the way they're behaving is basically once you've been declared an idiot, then you have a choice. That's why when you go to a government building or a hospital, they ask you what religion you are. You know, so so what you know, what idiot, what what, uh, what idiotic it, membership are you part of? OK, just to go back to the cosmic politics. Uh, the Elohim are the human collective, uh, meaning they have the um, the five pointed star, you know, the two arms, two legs and head. Right. Uh, most most beings have that. They're the human collective. Um, and what you will see in the ancient texts, and it's very sparse and very uh 
minimal but very significant is you have this concept of the serpent, a sky serpent, the dragon, the Draco, um, the reptile, on and on. Okay, when you see that, look, examine the context, and now we're going to get into the inner cosmic political world. And when you get into the inner cosmic political world, you will find, however old you think the universe is, or however big it is, that this universe is run by an imperial force. Okay, I'm actually using their terms now. Who who are they? And that imperial force is comprised of these dragons, reptiles, Draco types. In other words, they are the original species, the first progenitor type group to enter into this universe. Okay. Who, where and who they came from, I don't know. I don't want to act like I'm, I know everything about everything or everything about some things. I know a lot about many things, but I can't continue on that path. But what well, I can tell the dinosaurs, you, you know, before us, the dinosaurs were a pet project of these reptiles, just like we would have a zoo or a, a public park um, uh, uh, put together to be a recreational place to go and admire animals and natural settings. If you've ever been to uh, uh, old money, black nobility property, they ha they'd love their gardens. You know, like, you know, if you go to some uh, real old, old money people, they invest a lot in their gardens. They have greenhouses and beautiful grounds and all that. That's what the earth was, what they did. The dinosaurs, okay, they say a meteor destroyed them. Okay, now it looked like a meteor, right? Like here, here for example, since you brought up the dinosaurs, that's good. We're taking a narrow swath, okay, of, of something that's huge. Uh, you know, you, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So here's one bite, okay? Um, now, we all, hopefully you, myself, and whoever is listening is fairly reasonable and logical, okay? So, um you have a magnet in your hand and I have a magnet in my hand and we throw them at each other. Let's say your magnet's the size of a beach ball and mine is the size of a grain of sand. And I throw my magnet at your magnet. You know, they're going to uh, connect. And where are they going to connect? On the poles, not at the equatorial part. So if, um, if meteorites are magnetic, which they all state they are, um, and the Earth is magnetic, um, it is nearly impossible for a natural meteorite to hit anywhere else than the North Pole or the South Pole. So we have this large hole in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, huge two mile wide uh, hole in Arizona. They're all over the world, in Russia, Africa, where quote unquote meteorites hit. Those were not natural meteorites. Those were actually put together by the human collective, the Elohim and others, other hybrid derivations of. Um, and when I mean a hybrid derivation of, like for example, I have a friend and he's Okinawan, and his wife is Portuguese. Now, Okinawan looks, you know, people mistake them for Japanese, but they're not. Okinawans are Okinawans, okay? And they have a daughter. So he's Asian and she's European. So their daughter is Eurasian. And I call her a hybrid because from a racial perspective, she is a hybrid. She's not Asian and she's not European. You see what I mean by hybrid? It's very easy to hybridize, by the way. Uh, just like I have a, a friend uh, and she's uh, from uh, the con African continent and her husband's Italian, white, right? So their child is neither. It's a hybrid, you see. So you have hybrid humans. Okay, so some of these hybrid humans uh, decided to gather together space junk and throw it down on the planet around the area of Mexico and create that big swath, that big uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico area. But whenever you see, by, for example, meteorite strikes on the Earth, you could look up on the internet, internet craters, meteor, meteorite craters. Uh, anything that's not exactly at the North Pole or exactly at the South Pole is not a natural meteorite. You know, then you're going to say, holy shit, Greek, what are you talking about? Well, first of all, I want to just say that you've been lied to. Second of all, they don't. They know this fact. I just showed you using third grade science. What do you? When do you think children are given magnets to play with? Around the third grade, fourth grade, maybe. It was pre K for me. Okay, there you go. So that that meteorites, natural meteorites, will never hit the surface of the Earth other than above 80 latitude or below, right? So North Pole or South Pole. So all of these meteorite air uh, craters that you see on the planet are weapons. Okay. 
And then if you want to discuss, you know, further on how, how you know, how you can even tell what kind of, a, like, for example, a ballistics expert can tell you what kind of, a, a, a you know, explosive it was by, because of his training. Okay. Um, just like uh, um, forensic people that uh, do murder cases can tell you what kind of an animal this person was mauled by. Right. Like if it's a lion, it's always the bet, the face. A bear will be the groin and the intestinal area, right? A dog will be the limbs and the fingers, right? If you so, if you see a body having those characteristics right away, with one second, you can you'll know what animal did that to a human. But the common person will be walking around and says, "I don't know, man. He just had parts of his body bitten off. He he couldn't tell, right?" And I just gave you the small little outline that if you just remember those little rules, it's like you've just you know elevated yourself to the top 0.1 percent of the society. So. Once you see how the magnets attract and you see what's going on on the earth, you know that they were uh, they were not uh, meteorites per se. So th that's what the dinosaurs were. Now, by the way, uh, I'll go out on a limb. The human collective that did this uh, was severely punished and their planet was wiped out. Here, I'm going to go out on another limb. Please. When you when you look at the what they call the Pleiades, which has over uh, 20,000 suns and several million planets with civilizations, uh, that is a general grouping, constellation grouping. When you look at it now with a telescope or what's been documented by science, uh, that only represents 10% of what was there a million years ago. A million years ago, there were 90% more planets and suns, and they were all lost in an incredible battle and war that lasted for a very long time. Between the, um, the dragons, let's say, I, I don't like using the term Draco because that's a very, you know, when people say reptilians and Draco, you hear all this stuff, right? Which ones? It's it's like when you say humans, the humans aren't doing anything. Uh, if you look, for example, at um, Earth, you, you can't just say humans because you have so many nations that have so many different cultures and way that they live. You have to say, well, Americans or Russians or Egyptians or Iraqis, right? Or Chinese, because they're so very different the way they're acting, right? Uh, yeah. So true. the same with the reptiles. I mean, when, I mean, who are they? Is like, for example, the um, the Imperial Draco. They they're in the area of Thuban, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which used to be the North Star. Now now it's no longer the North Star. It was the North Star about thirty six thousand years ago. Uh, you have uh, Kalask, the group called Kalask. Uh, that runs the Milky Way. They have pretty much integrated themselves out of, they're still part of the empire, but they've integrated themselves more into a more broad reaching way of thinking. Because the purpose, the, the, the thinking that the Imperial has, uh, Imperial uh, Draco, is their thought is to explore and dominate the entire universe by force. Um, or by, collect, uh, by, by a willing collective. So when they show up, if you're a willing collective, there's no force involved, right? Um, you have others uh, in the ancient, a lot of them that interacted that are known as the demons, like the demon Ga or Morkul uh, or Vortak, right? You have the Theta Tori. I mean, I could go down with a 50, a list of uh, maybe another 20 or 30. No, let's not even do it. I, I can send you the list and you could type it in. So when you hear about the reptilians, I just mouthed out about eight or nine different races that are very distinct. There's about 50 to 75. So when you hear about people talking about reptilians, or it would be just like someone said, hey, uh, I visited Earth and met humans. And you're like, oh, humans, okay. But they're not telling you that there's different groups here with different cultures and different, right? So then you have to question if they just stick to humans, what do you know about them? And who are they? Oh, well, you know, they like to eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what and I hear when I listen to the, really the scope. Yeah, yeah, it, that, that's like that's like so narrow. It's almost down to stupid. So when you listen to what's being put out there in this quote unquote community called the SSP, whatever, when I hear that, it's it's like I, I, I told Daniel, I can't listen. I have not listened to any SSP videos for more than five minutes. Anyone, I have to turn it off because it's just. Um, uh, I, I'm not saying that they're full of crap, but if you put it on a scale, it wouldn't weigh anything. Um, so, and it's not helping anyone. So one, one thing that, you know, we took a narrow swath at the dinosaurs when we led to this. So essentially 
for the past, I would say, half a million years, when you got the moon, uh, the moon that we have now, the satellite known as the moon, yes. which is a dead, it's a dead planet, by the way. All, all planets and moons are, are living, uh, they have living, they're a living entity, um, but the moon is a dead one. It would be like, uh, for example, uh, you know, when you go out in the forest and you see animals, um, uh, they're alive. But if someone shoots one and taxidermies it and hangs it on his wall, it's it looks alive. You know, I don't know if you've ever been into a place that had that. They turn on the light and you see a bear growling you're like, whoa, for a second, you're startled because it's so lifelike, but it's dead. That's our moon. It still has maintains its look like a planetary body. By the way, once you start getting to more advanced cosmology, everything is a planet. What do I mean by that? Suns are planets. I know they're not fusion balls or whatever. Black holes are planets. Quasars are planets, right? Which All these things are planets. planets. Sorry? Which are just larger black holes, quasars. It's simply pulling in. Well, some yeah, all of the things that pulsar quasars all of the bodies that they tell you are gas giants for example there are no, there's no such thing as a gas giant uh planet uh for example you could look at the schumacher levy comets it's a, a string of pearl uh meteorites that hit jupiter in the mid 90s um if it was a gas planet it would have gone through no matter how strong the magnetic field it would not have captured them and you could see the surface impact it goes through the the clouds of jupiter there's still video they like they scrubbed it all uh, but you could still find it. You could see the meteorites and it's like a string of pearls. There's about seven or eight or nine meteorites going into large meteors, I should say, not meteorites, into Jupiter. And crash. And when they would crash on the surface, there would be a, a very bright flash. All of the planets have surfaces. The, the, the sun has a surface. It's, all, it's a planet also. Uh, uh, so I know it's, this sounds bizarre, uh, but just well, no, um, great. I, all of this is well complete. I can't get this anywhere else, please. Like You're not. Yeah. You're sorry, you're not. And well, there are people that know it, but they're not speaking. Like, for example, 9/11 was a textbook 101 nuclear demolition. Nuclear meaning on they're placed underground, and anything on on the surface, the surface reaction, you know, uh, dustifies the object and brings it down. That's 101. That is like as if you were taking classes in electricity, you would learn there's a positive and negative on a battery. You know, real basic stuff. The most basic. Uh, nuclear demo demolition works was 9-11. 101, okay, there were thousands of people involved, Americans and others, foreigners, uh, Department of Energy, the o uh, OST, which is the Office of Special Transportation, it's a branch of the Secret Service, uh, EG&G, which is a, um, they've been uh, tasked since the 1940s to develop all the instrumentation. I could go on and on and on and on. All of these people were involved, FEMA, you know, everything. Uh, they were all involved in it. And you know what? There's not one person that's come public to give even a slightest breakdown of such a basic uh, event. You know that? Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, yeah. Those who speak don't know. Those who know don't speak is that is what I've been told, when, you know, when it comes sure. to Sure. So, yeah. so for, if that holds true, then I'll say I don't know. I'm just speaking. How about how's that? <laughs> OK, uh, I didn't mean it that I wasn't implying anything. No, no, of course. Uh -huh. So so from a from a let's go back to the cosmic inner politics. So there's a sort of a truce around the time when the moon was put in place. Uh, the uh, the Elohim. Uh, which you call God or gods or Yahweh and the whole collective, the Elyon, um, they have a group of hybrids with them also. They're known as the Nakash, and they are the reptilian hybrids. Very similar to if you watch the later Star Treks, where in the early Star Treks they're fighting the Klingons, but in the later Star Trek they have Worf who's like on the bridge. He's a officer, right? Like they had a peace treaty, so now he's an officer. Never, kind of like, yeah. yeah. And of that, but still, uh, yeah. Yeah, just kind of, well, look at the American uh, military. You would have never had a black man or an Asian man in the military 150 years ago. They were so prejudiced, right? So, you know, would have never happened. But now you do. So you have a hybrid. Uh, it's called, they're called the Nakash. Uh, and they're in the Bible. Um, <laughs> so everything I've telling you, most of it is pretty, well, it, it's not easy to access, but I'm, maybe that's why I'm saying it. But some of the stuff that's easy to access, like I'll point out, if I say something's in the Bible or, or give you a direct reference, you can get it. You can look it up yourself. Uh, these Elohim, uh, through treaty and other things like that, um, will dominate the earth and have been dominating the earth. They're very hands-off. Um, just like if you lived in somewhere in the middle of Montana, you wouldn't know what was going on in Washington, D.C. unless you watched it on TV or got a letter. But if you didn't 
watch them on TV because these Elohim are not on TV and you don't get letters. It seems like they're not around. You see what I mean? Yes. So they're going to, uh, what I've been saying, they're going to sneak in because remember, this solar system is under imperial rule. Um, but uh, they do have, like, for example, Saturn and Jupiter are major, major uh, things in occult literature. Like, you know, Saturn is the black cube. You see it in the Kabbalah, right? Father Time, Kronos. Jupiter is known as Jove. You always swore by Jove or Jupiter or Zeus. Um they're the moons of these planets um, have ambassadorship outposts of both the Elohim, the human collective. They go by several names. The Elohim is the old Judaic term. I, I'll use that because it's the easiest to acquire. Uh, terms like Anunnaki and uh, other terms have been so bastardized and misused that I, I prefer not to trample a uh, walk on something that's been so heavily trampled it doesn't hold anything anymore so the truce that's in the solar system will not necessarily be broken but you're going to have this human collective sneak in and take over the earth and remanage the human collective that's on this planet for the next thousand years you will know that this is beginning when you see a middle east union form with a new country called assyria uh, basically a civil war in Iraq. You're going to see um, a monarchy installed in Israel. You're going to see a woman ruling Egypt. These things, when you start seeing these things happen, you'll know that you're getting to the time that I'm discussing where this particular society, as you've know, known it, will, will go away and the new one will come under the Elohim. But the Elohim will not be doing it directly. They will be doing it um, through a group of humans that they empower if that makes any sense. As a matter of fact, some of these empowered humans will be ancient humans that will be brought back from the dead, known as the resurrection. So it'll be people like uh, Adam. Osiris? Uh, what's that? Osiris? I don't know. No, he's, to, he's a part of a different collective. He will probably be punked, and he will be uh, given a reflective orange vest and a plastic broom, if you know what I mean. I'm thinking of what you like Okay, uh, if that's that colorful, is that descriptive enough? No, no, no. Um, what you're laying down, real quick. If we could, before you continue with these points, you say at the time a truce at the time the moon was put in place. Uh, yes. uh, by who and when, roughly? The mixed human collective, a mixed group of human, meaning and some reptilian. Uh, well, Draco based. Uh, more of the diminutive type. The the imperial Draco do not mix. Uh, only with their own. You hear about people being hybrids of them. That's no, sorry. You'll you'll be a hybrid of someone that is part of the uh, descended from them, but never the imperial. Um, uh, they're they're the most high snooty, highfalutin. Uh, how else would you say uh, beings in the universe, right? Even the Elohim will invite you in. Well, these guys will not. Uh, so most likely the 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 least the least the most uh, distant or the closest relative you could be to an imperial Draco will be uh, a hybrid that was probably done between the Kalask and the feline races, where the feline races, you see the, the Kalask um, invaded the feline in part of one of the Pleiadian and Ceres constellations, and they got such a fight back, um, just like the Elohim have been fighting the Draco back. See, see, this is how the Draco are. When I say Draco, Imperial Draco, when they come to invade you and you fight back and you bloody their nose and even threaten to destroy their strike team, they don't call in more to, kill, to, to, to beef up their lines to defeat you. They stop and they say, wow, what a bunch of noble, brave fighters. Hey, instead of destroying them, we'd be better if they were on our side. They respect it. They respect the people that they have respect it. Yeah. Exactly. Do exactly. you see that? So because of that, they kind of work with the um, the feline races. So from that program, you might have some humans that might say that they came from some kind of reptilian hybrid from that point of view. Notice I'm being very specific on this. Um, every time there's a uh, uh, you know, the, the concept of a sine wave, it goes up and down and, you know, you have a peak and a, and a, and a lull. This yeah. is how the people that talk about the fantasies yeah, that have been going on in space, you, you have someone that pops up every couple of years that gives everyone all this hope 
that the uh, the dragons will be um, the, the Draco are defeated and humans are liberated and there's no war. That's uh, that's that's like the Jesus nailed to a cross wearing a diaper thing. It doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. It's fake, but it gets everywhere, right? Everyone uh, worships it. Um, the the that will never happen. It um, in this universe now. If you think you can escape the universe and go to another universe completely, that what might be the case where the Draco are defeated. What will happen in the future is just like I mentioned, the feline races confronting the dragon races and they found the dragon, the red Draco, let's say, found them to be noble and respected them. They did the same with the humans. And to the point right now where the human, the Elohim, are some of the most technologically advanced in the universe, uh, at, at parity, if not slightly more than the Draco. What will happen in the future is all of these races, the Draco will always remain dominant because they were first here. But they were letting more of the, instead of being so dark, they're letting more of a lighter side. Like, for example, if you were in the reptilian collective, which is over a million different races, and you showed sympathy and empathy for one of your kind or another, you were sent to a mental hospital because sympathy and empathy is considered a disease. Um, they are letting more of that into their collective and have been for thousands of years. And word has it that recently, in recent in the past few thousand years, the Imperial High Command in the Draco also is allowing it because before when it was brought into some of the other races They would destroy those races for having sympathy and empathy and the big milestone here is a Few thousand years ago that the even the highest groups uh, of those who dominate this universe are allowing more of a lighter side To understand what love is what sympathy is what empathy is what peace is right, but peace is also a bizarre thing because um, from a logic perspective, when you want peace, only peace, that means you have to be in a constant state of war with war. Enforcing your rule everywhere. In order to have peace. Well, right. yeah, so when, you have, when you make war, uh, you're making war. When you make peace, you make peace. But do you have, if you ask people uh, or groups why they go to war is to make peace. Not right, and when you ask them why they go to peace, is to not make war. So to not do something, essentially, you're fighting that thing that you don't want, right? So the the concept of peace and war again has not been explored spiritually, philosophically, and on and on and on to actually develop a a point where we could say this is a state of condition of neither peace nor war that we will exist in. It's either peace or war, and that doesn't work. That's like saying black or white, and I hate to tell you, but most of everything is gray, shades of gray. Mm -hmm. I could show you a shade of gray that is so light, it appears to be white, but it's still gray. I could show you a shade of gray that is so dark, it appears to be black, but it's still gray. So these are things that could be discussed in the future. But Again, what will happen, uh, the various, let's say the hu the main human collective and the main Draco collective, they both have the same uh, idea, which is to explore and dominate the universe, but they will come to a crossroad and more than a crossroad to a point within each of their groups. Well, they will sense that the, it, it's best if they, everyone work together, okay, instead of carving up territory and having truces and armistices, right? Um, you take over here and I take over there, right? No, it will be uh, that this is this will not happen till far into the future. Um, the, the, the soonest I see it ever beginning to happen is more than a thousand years from now. So I hope I shared because one of the messages you gave me share some things that I haven't done at all yet. And I think I, I might have, right? Yes, and, and also things that you said off record without allowing me to record. So I appreciate. Sure. Yeah, Anything else you? Oh, sure. sure. Since since the clock is still ticking, go ahead and uh, may fire something off. Maybe uh, you know, catalyze the moment. You know what I mean? Go yeah. ahead. So I'm just super interested in our real history. You know, the real American history. That the, this the stuff that's not oh, no. school. You know, like like you were giving me the real reasons why we did uh, why we had the Civil it, War. You tell me. I mean, I don't know what you can. Comment. It's a trap. It, America was a trap. What happened was. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on in Europe, very, very harsh stuff. You know, they wanted to exterminate certain people. Uh, Islam was created to prevent the spread of Christianity through the whole world, which was a good thing, by the way. 
because Christianity promotes ignorance and dominance and really negative stuff, believe it or not. Uh, that in, uh, turned Europe inside out. Uh, but by the way, you know, all of this, you know how you destroy the, all the false narratives is by using definitions, right? I think before we've gone in this uh, J-E-S-U-S -S character does not exist biblically or historically. It was made up just like um, uh, Oswald who shot Kennedy was made up. He was a patsy. Oh, and just like a joke. Yes. Yeah. Just like just like Osama bin Laden was made up. Right. Uh, right. On and on and on. Oh, no, I, like it, Einstein was made up and he you know, was close, but, but he didn't do what they say he did. Right. What not he, a, well, a, he didn't even exist the way that they say, like, for example, uh, you know, there was no crucifixion, right? Uh, that's pretty obvious uh, whether you know it or not. I mean, it's, it's, it's really obvious because he was returned the, the Roman governor Pontius Pilate returned him back to the Judeans to use their law. That's the, that's the key. Right. So, um, uh, there's no, uh, you know, he's the most hate. He talked, uh, if you read the New Testament, uh, the, the biblical Christ is the most hateful character in the entire Bible. He hates everyone. <laughs> he's, he's like, kind of like, I'm like, I call myself an equal opportunity hater. I just hate everyone. With good right? reason though, Greek. I mean, yeah. So, you know, until you prove yourself, uh, you know, like, uh, we talked about, um, the Napoleonic uh, code of law, you know, you're guilty until proven innocent, you know, yeah. uh, otherwise, why would they arrest you? Right. So um, probable cause or whatever. So anyway, what, what America was, was a trap. Uh, basically, there was so much uh, it was to blow off steam. Uh, they created all the corporate states. You know, they're all all the 13 colonies were corporations. You could look it up. They still are. Uh, they were uh, brought, they came over here, and then you had a bunch of degenerates known as the Founding Fathers who wanted to join the House of Lords, and they kept appealing to the king, um, and he denied them. So they mustered up enough money to, uh, uh, and they also waited for the smallpox pandemic to, to reach a very high uh, state when they started doing what they were doing. And they had help from the French and all the other stuff. And remember, the Bavarian Illuminati were formalized at the same time. It all has uh, very much, uh, you know, intertwined together. Uh, the George Washington character, which one? The, the, the one that people talk about, he died in the first week of the uh, Revolutionary War. And then they put a, a, a lookalike there that had no teeth. That's why when you look at the history, they're like, how are we going to get teeth in this guy's mouth? Hurry up, get some teeth in his mouth, right? And when he would show up to the Freemasonic meetings and they want to do certain rituals, he flipped out because he never, you know, he didn't know anything, right? He was, he was the lookalike. This is how sad and pathetic the American history is. Uh, uh, you're, you're on the brink of a civil war right now because, um, but not like the original civil war that they called the, it was never called the civil war until the early, uh, early 20th century. It was called the war of the states. Um, and it was the federal versus the states and it was over commerce and taxation. Um, but here, you know what's interesting? Do you remember uh, a few years ago how they started doing all these protests with BLM and Antifa and whatever else like that? <sighs> doing property okay. damage. So how they, how the yeah. Rolls Royce yeah. SUV would leave bricks on the side of the road and these uh, all these hip hoppers oh, and whatever. Yeah. Else. Now, is it true? Because I, I use this whenever I go politicking around. Not, not that it'll make a difference, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but I try and put my money where my mouth is. No, actually, sorry, may, running what? for it will make more of a difference than getting the job, by the way. You Thanks. will bring more, you will, running, actually, the process of running, you know, like the trip, it's not getting there, it's the trip. What you do while you're running will make more of a difference. But go ahead. It's true that they're all George Soros funded, and I don't know if you... Uh, I'm not going to say this anymore, but uh, George Soros isn't really who he's played up to be. He is. He, most of the facts are correct. Uh, I'm not going to I, I mm, no, not publicly. Uh, he's just a front man for another front man. Uh, you will never remember. We, we started off mid-level management. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to see. OK, put it this way. If you've seen their picture, you heard their voice or know or heard their name, they have no power. They are a representative, uh, just like, for example, if you watch a Tom Cruise movie, Tom Cruise is not who he says he is in the movie. He's, uh, he's just some that. actor. So you could watch a Tom Cruise movie where he plays a samurai he's in Japan, another one where he's a pilot, uh, Air Force, yeah. right? Top yeah. Gun. Yeah. You could watch him where he's a, a, you know, he's not any of those things. 
outside of the movie, right? So outside of whatever was reported to you that this guy is doing is not true. It, but if they tell you Soros is funding within the story, yes, it is true. But overall, you, it, it laying blame, which is what they want you to do, is not. Okay, but this is my point. You could look this up. But uh, in the early 18, before 1860, uh, groups like Antifa and BLM were being sent out throughout the countryside, raping, burning, pillaging, stealing, killing people all over the place to destabilize the country prior to the Civil War. They were black hooded men. They were black. They showed up middle of the night. They would torch barns, shoot children, women, rob, steal all over the country, particularly the southern, like the Midland states. You could look this up. Uh, you know, Ohio, Carolinas, Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania. There were these marauding bands. They were like softening up the, um, the the culture before. Now they say uh, the attack on Fort Sumter or something started the Civil War. That was like a oh, semi-defunct uh, fort. It was a false flag, and they said put some drunk, a bunch of alcoholics running the place, just blow up something there and say they were attacked. Just like the Vietnam, right? What was the, uh, that the, they, the, even the Pentagon admitted it was a false flag. They never got attacked by Vietnam, right? Remember the uh, Bay, what is it? The whatever, the, the Gulf of Tonkin. Yes, Gulf of Tonkin, they admit. Okay, but this is what they don't admit. Do you know that uh, uh, the Vietnamese sunk a U.S. aircraft carrier? You could look it up. And they sunk it in port. How did they do it? Uh, sponge divers can hold their breath for 20 minutes on average. They got a bunch of sponge, uh, sponge, Vietnamese sponge uh, divers to go underneath the aircraft carrier and with magnets and some rudimentary waterproof devices or timers. And I mean, the, 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 it looked like something out of a cartoon uh, placed on the hull of the ship uh, away from the anchorage, you know, which is where the ship is reinforced and blew a big hole in it and sunk. You, you could look this up. The Vietnamese did sink an aircraft carrier, but the reason why it's never made public, even though it's you can find it publicly, is because if you sink someone's aircraft carrier, you sunk my battleship, right? It's a lot worse than that. Uh, it's like a, a punch in the eye. To an imp because what do aircraft carriers represent? Imperial dominance, right? right. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, you, you don't put all of your greatest assets in one basket. Uh, there's no such thing as an aircraft carrier. They're called carrier groups. An aircraft carrier requires about a dozen ships to support it. And they're the easiest things to take out. There's constantly war games being done with aircraft carrier groups and the uh, opposition generals. Within the, the what they do in the Navy, they say, you'll be team A, you get the uh, carrier group, and team B, you get whatever weapon you want to fight the carrier group. You know, within the same US Navy, what do the uh, team B always pick? They uh, they go and buy uh, a forty thousand uh, dollar a whole uh, about a dozen forty thousand dollar speedboats or a hundred thousand dollar speedboats and a couple of silkworm missiles or granite missiles and that's it and they take out the carrier group in seven minutes every time and they've been doing the same exercise since the 1970s and since the 1970s up until about five years ago every carrier group has been taken out uh, in less than 15 minutes with just a bunch of regular speed boats which you can go down to the dock and buy and some silk uh, silkworm or granite missiles very simple rudimentary right i'm looking up silkworm missile you had mentioned uh, granite before and explained the granite is what they shot into the Pentagon, by the way, it's a 500. Well, our house or home house who makes them. Um, there's the, the P 700. There's a P 100 and P 200. I shouldn't be. Well, actually, the P 700 is a 500 kiloton. It's a shipwreck missile. P 700 is a 500 kiloton thermonuclear uh, in it's a ramjet and rocket powered. It has a rudimentary AI. It's satellite driven. You can't knock it out with an EMP. It flies in a spiral, and right before it hits the target, it drops to eight feet above or ten feet above the water line. It's hypersonic, um, has a ceramic reinforced casing. It's designed to go through it through the hull of a ship. Now, fortunately, well, the the guys who launched the P700 towards the Pentagon did not have the codes. How do we know? Well, because it, you didn't see a nuke go off, right? So and those were absconded. The the the, sh the missile that they shot into the Pentagon was absconded from the Kursk submarine, which went to the bottom in the year 2000. It imploded. 
and it had 21 of these missiles on board, and they were all, when they raised the Kursk, all of them were missing. That was, in, that was an inside job with the Putin. Putin covered it up. All the Russian generals covered it up. They got wealthy off of that. How do you think Putin's worth $250 billion? People don't know that. I see Putin's like the richest man on the planet, right? $200 billion or something plus? A lot of people don't know. I don't know if you heard of this. Putin Palace, one of the biggest palatial estates out in uh, Sochi or something. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Well, they all do. The, all these guys that do in arms. Like, look, even the American generals, every single one has a degree in finance, right? I'm serious. And once they get into power, it's kind of like when I got a, a, a 16 or 15 years old, I worked at a convenience store and uh, I wasn't happy working there, but it was, you know, you could, you could make, you could work anytime. It was 24 hours, right? So if you want a little extra cash, you could just schedule yourself anytime during the day. And this is what the manager tells me. He says, uh, it's 350 an hour. This is like 1980, right? Uh, it's 350 an hour and all you could steal. I was like, what? The manager's telling me that? Holy crap, what kind of an institution is this? It's exactly how all the U.S. generals are. The worst military commanders ever this planet has ever seen are the U.S. generals. This is very well-known, established fact in all the military schools in the world. Um, all they do is abscond. They, they, they go through the State Department. They have what's called the commercial program. And how many, how many uh, stockpile numbers can we change and sell these things to whoever? I'm serious. This is this is the condition that your 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 country is in. Well, the military. This is what I'm telling you is very well known in mid mid level and upper management in the military. The common people know nothing about this. Uh, also, when you could be in the military, know nothing about this. But we are colonel and above, or uh, colonel, major, whatever. They all know this, and they all want to get in on it. I know this, this is pretty bad, right? Okay, ISIS. When ISIS came out in 2014, all those brand new Toyotas, uh, they made sure that they got the Toyotas from a plant in Texas because the plant in Texas fits them with the bigger radiators, so they have better cooling capability for running in the desert, right? So all the people that had like you know two brain cells to rub together called up Toyota and said, "Hey, we're watching TV and there's thousands of brand new Toyotas. Why did you give?" ISIS, these Toyotas, you know, they're supposedly an American enemy. He says, we didn't. Your American State Department put the order in for them. Oh, the State Department. Yeah, the American State Department. Because there's many of them. Yeah. This is, this is public. This is actually uh, Toyota po official uh, response. I don't how many people are doing anything about it? No, because you can't. You're an idiot. I mean, people are typically moronic. Idiots. So this... Do you see how shocking? Okay, going back to the Civil War. Yes. It was not a civil war. Basically, what happened as the U.S. was growing, uh, it was commercial. You know, this what you call the thirteen colonies or the states or corporations. They're known as plantations. Like Rhode Island's still known as a plantation. It's on their seal. You go look at it, right? Plantation okay. state, they call it. Yes. Yeah, it's on their seal. Yeah, they're a plantation. Thank you. All okay, this is the number of the grave. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was uh, Georgia, you know, Alabama, Florida, Carolinas and all that, they each had collectives. So when they, let's say, uh, grew cotton, everybody brings their cotton to a cooperative and then it's sold overseas, right, to England and France where they were had the factories, right? So when you're a factory in England and you want to buy cotton, you get a bid of how much cotton you want to buy and you give it to all the states. And, you know, Georgia wants $10 a bale. South Carolina wants 7 Alabama wants five. Okay, so guess who you're going to go with? The one who is the cheapest, right? And yeah. not only are you going to buy from the cheapest, you're eventually going to buy all of it. Now you have to go to the next one. So when Alabama was five and Georgia was $7 a bale and Georgia finds out Alabama ain't got no more cotton at $5 a bale, do you think they're just going to sell it to you for seven now or they're going to jack their price to 10? Oh, yeah, they know you're going to buy it. Yep. And the, and uh, South Carolina, which was ten dollars a bale, they gave it to ten a year ago. You think they're gonna they're gonna jack it up to twenty now? I'm about to say. Right. So now all the people that are trying to price things in England, their factories, like, wait a second, the cotton prices are crazy. You got to do something about this. Can't have that kind of merc, uh, mer, you know freedom. Mercantile. Yeah. Right. So they went to Abraham Lincoln. He was dying of syphilis. He's been dying of syphilis for like ten years. <laughs> and they said, listen, jerk off. Um, <laughs> We're going to back you up. You got the Freemasons and the Knights Templars. Oh, here's another thing. If you go to Switzerland, you, you'll find a lot of mansions in the forest. It's like you'll be hiking in the forest somewhere in the mountains, and there's a clearing, and you're like, what the hell is this? It's like castles in, in the middle of nowhere, right? Compounds, right? 
So you walk up to one of these uh, outer compounds and you look inside and guess what they have uh, as, as their flag in Switzerland? The Confederate flag. And it's been there for hundreds of years. So where do you think the Confederates got their flag from? It's a Knight Templar creation. Uh. Right? <laughs> uh, anyway, so so they, what they did was they said, whatever it takes, go to war, create a war. Now, there's nobody living in Washington, D.C. It was a swamp. You know, they, this, this, the, the American government started in Wall, on Wall Street. OK, that's where George Washington was sworn in, the, 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 the lookalike, right, where, you know, per se, George Washington, right, so to say. Then they moved to Philadelphia and uh, they started writing a constitution like it didn't come till 13 or 14 years later. When they first wrote it, we don't know who wrote it. It was sent to the Vatican for approval. Hmm. Right. Wow, and it, okay. it, didn't, it didn't come back for five years. Uh, and it came back and that's the one that they put it. This is public. You could look this up. Uh, also, they, they knew that when they had election of congressmen and senators, they, they didn't want them to stay in there very long. You could look this up. And in the Constitution, it says if you're going to be a senator, you have to be an inhabitant of the state. Right. To be a, to run for Senate, you have to be an inhabitant of the state that you want to run for. Right. It's in the Constitution. But then it says if you want to run again, you cannot be an inhabitant of the state. Oh, and that means you can never run again, because if you're an inhabitant already and you want to run again, but you're an inhabitant and you can't be. So that's how they put the term limit to one term. But nobody follows this. You can look at everything up. I'm telling you. Greg, I, I promise. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's how they made it a one term. So that's proof that, look, I've spoken to constitutional attorneys. And I bring up, said, you know, Section 10 of the Constitution says that let it not be, be misconstrued that any court of the United States has any power in law or equity. You know what I just said? That the courts have no power in law or equity. So what are they doing? And the constitutional attorney is like, oh, it doesn't say that. And his buddy's right. Hold on. I found no, it. They don't want to admit it because it would undermine. They don't even know it. They don't even know it. So when someone tells you they're, they're a heart surgeon, they don't even know anything about the heart. Constitutional attorney knows nothing about the Constitution. Nothing. Zero. I mean, this is we're, we're living in such a shit show. Um, it, it's, it's unbelievable. I just showed you how uh, all congressmen and senators have one term limits. Right. And actually, there was someone who said this publicly a while back to one of the senators when he was campaigning to run again, and he stopped his campaign because he, he, he's like, yeah, I, I already said I'm, I want to follow the Constitution. And he actually was honorable and he did. I think it was in Arkansas. Right. So you do have some honest people that come. Bill Clinton, right. No, I'm joking. Anyway. No, no. This is like 70s. This is when Clinton yeah, know, was still I, smoking pot. Yeah. This yeah, is when he was. He, oh, no, he didn't. You can't say that. That's defamation. He said he never inhaled. OK, so <laughs> I know I was old enough for that. Right. OK, so uh, he's still not inhaling. Uh, <laughs> uh, Great. OK, so so that's what's going on, basically. And after the. Um, after the, uh, they got whatever they needed done, because they terrorized the South for 20 years, you know, the, the carpetbaggers and all that stuff, right? They kept uh, raping and burning. And there were people from all over the world. You know, for example, the Russians sent a fleet to help Lincoln. Do you, are you aware of this? You could look it up. The Revolutionary War, the fleet was sent from Poland or Prussia. But the uh, Lincoln uh, needed help. So the czar, the Russian czar, sent a fleet. You could look that up. That's public. Nicholas? Probably well, one of the Nikolai. Yeah. So. So there we go. Um, so what happened after that? Uh, Lincoln is finished. He, we don't need you anymore. Got rid of him. You sh his, they, they were going to have him killed, but his wife shot him instead. So it was like, oh, great. You know, you said because the lady's pistol is on display. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can yeah, agree yeah. with that. I don't know. If I'm yeah, but anyway, it, all the witnesses and all that, you know, his wife shot him right there because he was, you know, anyway, uh, you could keep going on and on and on. There's a lot of stories, but it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Right. At this point. So this is the state that you're in right now. So then what Lincoln did, he put in a, a general order 100 and this is which means no more Constitution, no more laws, no more Congress, no more Senate. The whole country runs under general Rule 100. Uh, no, General Order 100. Do you ever hear of executive order, like the president made an executive order? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, like, uh, that's yeah. an executive order. That's fine. They can do whatever they want. That's for the executive branch and work and employees of the government. So people apply that to themselves. 
I don't care what executive order. I'm not an employee or anything like that. They can make executive orders, whatever they want, mandates. It's for their workers. But when they do a general order, that's for the whole country. So it's called the Lieber Code. They got Francis Lieber to write it. And it's about the it's called the Army Field Manual, Army Manual, Army, no, Army Procedures for the Field or Army uh, Field Manual. Uh, Basically, the whole country is being run by the Army. It's uh, you either a peaceful inhabitant or a belligerent. OK, so that's what you're running under still right now. And also, if you further on to 1938, Erie Railroad versus Tompkins versus Erie Railroad was a precedent court case that said that all courts only work by contract. Right. Are you familiar with Tompkins versus Erie Railroad? 1938 to it because we studied so much case law, but honestly, nothing that ever matters. So Tom- oh, they're not going to bring that up. Tompkins versus Erie Railroad. That's why if you talk to any uh, federal judge in private, if you're reviewing a case, what the hell are you doing talking to a federal judge in private reviewing a case? Say, is this Erie bound or not? That's the language they use internally. Erie bound means it's contract law. And everything they do is Erie bound, unless it goes under the field manual, which it's a belligerent. Uh, And you know how doctors have billing codes, right, for insurance? Well, every case Uh number is a uh, yeah, every case number, traffic ticket, whatever, uh, through the what they call the justice system is a billing code through the Chris system, which is the Dallas Federal Reserve. It's the criminal registry investment system. It, it's uh, all the cases go through there and they're uh, underwritten by Fidelity Insurance. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Why are we getting into such yeah. details? Doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is the, all the result of the Civil War. Federal Reserve is a foreign bank, right? You know that with private uh, shareholders. Oh, yeah. Do you know that the Federal Reserve, um, not even the shareholders, the uh, officials on the board have much higher security clearance than the president does regarding anything? What would you label that? What, what, like, what do you call that level of security clearance? Is it majestic? Is that just hype? No. Yeah. Well, they do have different categories and it changes from group to group. Like the, the most cl- – okay, hey, you ready for this? This has not been ever said before. Please. Uh, hard to look up, but but true. The hard, the highest security group within government is the DOE, Department of Energy. They have the highest, most classified. It's not the CIA, it's not the FBI, it's not the well, military. It's the DOE, Department of Energy. Now let your mind run free. What does Department of Energy do? Uh, think about it. Create all the. Uh free energy and all the nuclear all the space stuff earth protect you know there's a, a protection system a, a big you know rail guns and a, energy guns to protect the earth right who do you think runs that okay okay when nukes are moved around uh nuclear material it's moved by the ost the office of special transportation that's why on 9 11 you had a bunch of ost inspectors there they even got caught on camera this is where you're from so i'm from the ost what do you do and you hear the nuclear alarm because when the first building went down the nuclear alarm went off because they disbanded all the alarms that day. So anyway, but people are so stupid. I know people that uh, were breathing in the air, which is radioactive, and they had melanomas that had their nose removed, they had cancers, and they still, I said, it was nuclear. I said, I don't know, man. The doctor didn't say that. You know, I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, uh, they, the, the coroner's report, by the way, for 9-11 um, – for all the people who died in the buildings, uh, everyone got a letter. Uh, it was vaporization. They were vaporized. Um, and they changed it. Uh, oh, the other the widows or all the close family, uh, everyone got $5 million and had a, uh, had a sign, an NDA that was about as thick as a telephone yeah. book. Great. All right, I'm going to interrupt you. Say that all over again because it cut out for some strange reasons. Say that after oh, vaporization uh, one more time. Well, the coroner, uh, when he did the coroner's report on uh, 9-11, Everyone that died in the buildings was class was written down on the coroner's report. They were vaporized. Okay. The coroner knew. And the they second, were vaporized. They cut out. And the second one was that all the close family members, when they agreed to sign an NDA, um, non-disclosure agreement, they all got a check for five million. All the that's why the widows are not. Then the one widow, well, there's a few widows that didn't want to take the five million and got into Obama's face. She died in a plane crash, or a heart attack, or cancer, or whatever. And there was a lot of other well, weird oh. stuff going on in New York that day, and 
when the people saw the weird stuff, they went to the police, ha ha, and they filed a report. And when you file a report with the police, they get your address, social security number, they know everything about you. All those 250, it's more like 400 people that filed police reports on strange things that they saw died within two years. Heart attacks, car accidents, uh, home invasions, on and on and on and on. So you never want to go to, to, you never want to snitch. Yeah, I didn't see nothing. They, if they ask, any authority ask you what you saw, I say, I didn't see nothing. Right? Or your life is in danger. All right, on and on and on. Because there's a lot of other weird stuff that's really bizarre that had, had to happen for, in order for the nukes to work. But that's another another topic, another story. But I like leaning on 9-11 because that is an event that, you know how they, they have this, the Patriots have a shirt you should never forget? You should yeah. never forget that. You should never forget Pearl Harbor, right? That, but you know, the ships are chained together. Police. You know, th those ships that went under in Pearl Harbor, the men were alive for a month knocking SOS. And the, they didn't have Navy SEALs. They, had, they were called frogmen at the time. They said, we want to go get those men. And their higher command says, you go, go near that ship to save those guys and you'll be shot on site. So don't forget Pearl Harbor. Don't forget the Civil War. Don't forget the Revolutionary War, really what it was about. Okay, the other thing about the Revolutionary War, the history of the country, uh, was King George. He made a decree, the proclamation, that in, in 1772 or 1770 or 1773, don't hold me on the year, that all the colonists are to respect indigenous people. You are not to invade them. You are not to take their land. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh! Right? Wow. Do you th right? So what did what did uh, you know? Uh, one of the nicknames for George Washington was village burner and child killer, right? No way! Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now the whiskey rebellion was not a whiskey rebellion at all. Those are the people that George Washington's group promised that they were going to pay for fighting, and they never did. The same thing, just like the tent villages that were set up in front of Washington D.C. Uh, after World War One, and MacArthur and a couple other guys went in there and shot and gassed all the families and people asking for their pay from World War One. You could look that up. Ten City, Washington D.C., 1920 or whatever. And MacArthur went in there with rifles and poison gas. It was like 900 families that wanted. They just wanted their pay that they were promised. You look this up. It happened like 1920 or I don't know whatever. Yeah, so it's pretty nasty. It's all it's just unbelievable. You know, talk about an 800 pound gorilla in the room in this country. It's not an 800 pound gorilla. It's a 3000 pound elephant and a 150 foot long blue whale in the room and you still don't see it. Now, here's the thing. Let's go back to 9-11. How many 9-11 truthers are out there and writing books on bullshit like space weapons and high energy? Yeah, there are high energy weapons for sure. Uh, and all this other bullshit hear, and explosions thanks. and all this stuff. Dude. What's that? I, I always hear John Lear saying it was a do, a D-E-W. Yeah. And well, like John Lear, John Lear, he worked for the company. Yeah, the, once you work for the company, CIA, you know, you never, it's for life, right? So, yeah, it's it's kind of tiring. You know, I can't spend more than five minutes watching anything online, maybe 10 minutes if I'm doing something else and my hands are dirty. I can't go hit the button. It's really sad. Here, here's an here. I'm going to say something that was written 500 years ago when the printing press was mass produced and people could have stuff printed anywhere because before that. A printing press, ooh, that's such a big thing. You know, you printed one page and passed it around, right? Well, they started uh, manufacturing printing presses and made your printing material cheap. You know what the comment was? All this gossip and trash that people talk about is now going to be mass produced and handed to everyone. So what does the Internet do? All this trash and gossip and mind control and psyops that are, right now has the opportunity to reach everyone on their devices. It's a giant re-education camp. Uh, yes, it's about wasting your time. That's why it's, uh, you know, how people say life is too short. I think life is too long. You only need like 10 or 15, 20 years on this stinking rock right now, the way it is. Why do you want to live to like 50, 60, 70 or 80? That's stupid. You, you ain't going to make a change. I ain't going to, because it's already a done deal. What, what needs to happen is the entire status 
of the planet needs to change. You see, because you're in a you're in a status right now. You're in limbo. So, <clears throat> so you know, there are humans that live millions of years. You know, human types. And even if you read the ancient texts, it was very common of uh, people to live up to a thousand or more. Very common. So, you know, uh, it would be very different than, you know, imagine going to a, like a, a street market and you want to buy a rug that's handmade and you're negotiating with the price on the guy and the guy's like, come on, man, it took me 90 years to weave this. Right. Because he lives to a thousand. Right. That would be a totally different world, wouldn't it? You see, yeah, that's what's coming, by the way. That's one thing I didn't say. When the Elohim take charge, entropy and aging and all this stuff will be reversed. So let's say you hear in the news a guy was 100 years old and he died. That would be like hearing a two year old died. Uh -huh. Right. Really Give that perspective. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You'll be going through puberty sure. at 35 or 40. Well, I'm still an infant then. <laughs> yeah. OK, that's fine. Yeah, I, I don't uh, I don't give up. Look, I always say if it came in a can, I'd be eating it right now. Anyway, that's pretty lascivious. No, yeah. <laughs> like well, so, uh, OK. Well, Greek, is it OK? It, my my wife wants to cook dinner. Is it OK if we pick up tomorrow and maybe no early? Mm -hmm. OK, can, any, I know you're two hours behind me, so it's four, almost four o'clock where you are. Is it okay if you just look anytime you call me tomorrow? Just yeah, I hope you, I hope this was fruitful for you. I know I like jumping all over the place because everything's connected. My wife's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hey, wife. <laughs> and, I, and I just uh, if we could just do it earlier in the day, I, we'll call her Josie. Okay, we'll call her. Okay, yeah. If, is it okay if Josie and I? Oh, she wants to prep dinner. Can we? Can we? Yeah, pick no, up? you go for it. And this is recorded. You have permission to put it anywhere you want, by the way, or just hold it for yourself. Okay, sounds good. Uh, um, if we could pick if up. If you want to do, if you want to redo it, uh, uh, you could take notes on it and ask me questions, and we could compact it down and keep it less less squirrely. Pages of notes I took today that I'd love to. I, I really would like to do a part two tomorrow. Do you have it? At, Let's do you, it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, tomorrow would be later. Uh, instead, like three hours from now would be best for tomorrow because I'll be uh, out and about. As in three hours uh, later than today. So right now for you it's what six? So yeah. about on so the dot nine. Yeah. I don't know if it, yeah six, but yeah. yeah. So I'm at four uh, on the wind up toy known as the clock, right? You've heard that before. Work schedule, yeah. Well, what uh, about Thursday? What what day, listen? What day can you do earlier? Earlier, I could do what they call Sunday. <laughs> okay. What what I'll do? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it up now. I will text you Sunday morning when I wake up and just. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll yeah, do this, do a part two. Cause That'd this be good. I'm 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 up when daylight daylight starts burning at 5 a.m. and I'm usually out doing gardening and working with the animals till about 6:37. So uh, your right. time so it'd be my time eight o'clock would be good, and okay. uh, or your time ten. Okay. That's fine. I'm gonna yeah okay. I'll, I'll regardless I'm gonna I'm gonna text you uh, Sunday morning. Okay. Okay, that'd be great. I'll see you then. Be well, bro. Thank you very much, Greg. All right. Take Cheers. care. All right. Cheers.